Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss some positional concepts of uh, chess. Mainly we are going to discuss five concepts which are uh, prophylaxis, playing against the isolated pawn, influence of holes, uh, pawn structures in games and the art of defense. As we all know that you know one of the best ways to learn concepts of chess is by learning is by learning and watching the games of the masters right so here i have selected five games uh, which show exactly these kind these concepts uh, of chess uh, these are by great some of the greatest classical players who lived in the 1900s such as the lasker capablanca uh, karpo and uh, karpo Karchukoshne is one of the recent or uh, one of the more recent ones uh, Tim Anglegorich is one of the other uh, recent grandmasters compared compared to uh, Capablanca or Lasker. So I think let's get into the f uh, first concept that is the prophylaxis with the game between Lasker and Capablanca. All right. So here Lasker is white and Capablanca is black. And the first concept that we are going to discuss is the prophylaxis. Let's get on. Lasker begins with e4, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, uh, bishop b5. Uh, this is the Ruy Lopez, and um, here Capablanca chooses the a6, that is the Morphe defense. Um, Lasker obliges by taking uh, the knight on c6, bishop takes c6, d takes c6, and now d4. So immediately I strike in the center, and we could see that there will be a uh, exchange of queens in the early beginning of the game. Uh, e takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, knight takes d4. Uh, bishop d6, uh, knight c3, knight e7, castles, castles, and then f4. So f4, even though uh, you uh, you know the, the main concept of f4 is just to you know get a get a good center, uh, play f4 and uh, have a later option of e5, but that is highly unlikely as e5 uh, as the pawn on e4 controls the f5 and the uh, d4 uh, d5 squares which are important for the black knight. So let's see what happens. Uh, Laska goes for f4, rook e8, knight to b3, f6. f6 is because uh, you don't want, you don't definitely don't want to hap happen uh, e5, right? Because if e5, then uh, I think the bishop will be trapped soon. Like you will have to exchange the uh, bishop for a knight. So let's say uh, if he doesn't play f6 and he plays something like, you no, know, uh, h6 or something like that, then they can go for f5, e5, uh, and after that, I think uh, black will not be having a very good, uh, a very good position, right? So I think uh, a5, and then black will have to go to uh, bishop b4, and then after something like uh, bishop d2, and then uh, a3, forcing the knight, forcing the bishop to take here on uh, c3. So I think that will be, uh, you know, something good, uh, something good for white. And black cannot have any move in this and then I, let's see this he just develops the knight then after a3 he will have to take and then uh, this is a position which is good for uh, which is better for uh, white so after f6 uh, so after f6 Laska goes for uh, f5 and you know it seem it may seem that this sort of creates a hole on the e5 square the e5 uh, the e5 square is definitely weak for the white uh, white white part now but on the other hand white gains advantage by gains a space advantage uh, by playing uh, f5 and it completely traps this bishop here on c8 so that is one of the uh, key aspects that we can look here for after playing uh, white being played the f5 move let's see what alaska's plan is here after f5 uh, black plays uh, b6 trying to play bishop b7 uh, bishop f4 trying to exchange the bishops and now um, Capablanca plays, uh, play, uh, plays an in an accuracy which leads to a sort of complication for him so he plays bishop d7 immediately um, this is you know a slight advantage uh, for white now so you can as you can see here that you no know, uh, these three pawns these three points will become the target of weaknesses become will become the weaknesses that will become the target for white scam so after you know knight has an important uh, you know, important jump here to d4 and uh, all sorts of crazy jumps so after 
bishop takes d6, Laska takes d6, and c takes d6. Knight immediately jumps to d4, tries to uh, threatening this uh, c6 weakness. So the c6 weakness is uh, c, c6 is uh, uh, weak now, and also knight can jump now to e6. So after rook a d8, we see exactly that knight e6, and then rook to d7 because it was threatening the rook. So rook to d7, rook a d1, knight to c8, maneuvering rook to f2, and then as you can see here as well that uh, this pawn, that is the d6 pawn, is weak now. So that is one of the other. Uh, I think let's say if we go back to this position, we can see that this d6 pawn will become very weak in the position after it stays, right? And I think Capablanca did not see this in the position. Uh, so after creating this d6 weakness, uh, White has the ability to, you know, to get onto it and try to target itself as much as possible on this uh, on this d6 weakness. And yeah, as you can see, the knight has already gone to a defending position here, uh, defending the d6 pawn. So rook f2, b5, uh, b5 as you can see here is uh, you know black sort of attempts to create counterplay on the uh, queen side. Rook f2 d2, and now rook d e7. Actually, the engine suggestion in this position is to play uh, b4, and you know after something like knight e2 and uh, something like that, the position is still better for white. There is a slight advantage for like 0.9 or 0 0.8 in this position for white, but it is still not better. Uh, as you can see here, black played here the rook d e7, uh, doubling down on this uh, e6, this beautiful e6 knight. Uh, it is, if you see the position right now, uh, this is a critical moment for this uh, game. If you see this position here right now, then you can see how, how, how good is white here, right? Like you can see this knight here on e6. You can see these pawns on e4, e4 and f5, which are a sort of an advanced pawns. And if uh, black is able to play something like c5, b4, b4, and able to liberate this bishop, then this can be some kind of weaknesses, right? Like this, this would be the only weakness perhaps in white's camp if this uh, bishop is able to open up. But for that, the one of the other things is that white has to be able to play c5, c5, right? So if you see here then white here has only chances of counterplays if he is able to liberate this bishop somehow and you, you will see here that the importance of prophylaxis that is the concept that is being discussed here right like how is uh, how is white able to do this so that nothing goes wrong so if you see here, so that nothing goes wrong for white and uh, you know, it cramps the po uh, black's position. It cramps up the black's position so that black does not have any chance of counterplay in this position. Uh, white has to be careful. White is slightly better, but as you know, the hardest game to win is a one game, and there is there are some weaknesses that may affect. So, the best way is to uh, you know threaten the plan, uh, not allow black's plans to expand here. And this is one of the critical moments where you have to pause and think about the move. The move here that uh, Lasker played was b4. So the, the importance of b4 is that if you don't play b4 or something like that, if you play king f2, uh, activating the king, then after b, uh, b4, black will play b4. And now after knight e2, c5, uh, not uh, c5 or something like even d5 is possible in this position uh, for the engine c5 now threatening this pawn uh, taking this pawn on e4 so as you can see here black has liberated his position somewhat right black is able to get some kind of counterplay and you know is able to have some kind of an initiative even though this position would be better for white but um, you know it, it increases the chances of drawing or even winning for uh, black in some cases so that is why Lasker uh, here instead of playing the king f2 move the regular layman move he have played b4 and stops all that counterplay, stops all that initiative that black could get by playing b4 and c5. So b4 is the important, so you can say the most important prophylactic move in this game. After b4, uh, black played king f7. Uh, black has nothing much to do here. Like his po his position is crammed. This black this black bishop is terrible. This knight is terrible. These rooks are terrible. But here white, as you can see, the knight is beautifully posted, the rooks are doubled on the d-file, this d6 pawn is a weakness. Um, so 
you know, just enjoying the position. Uh, white is just enjoying the position here. King f7, a3. a3 is just to, you know, that so that there is no a5 business or, you know, something stupid like that comes up and, you know, and, uh, and disturbs him in the later. So a3, bishop a8, king f, king f2 now, rook a7, g4. And now, you know, uh, this, this weakness is... Uh, beautifully guarded by this knight knight here right like this d6 pawn is guarded here by the knight so how to break through in these kind of positions it is very important to note here like how to break through if you don't know the proper way to break, break through then it is very uh, it, it is you know very very uh, probable that you will make some kind of a mistake and then uh, you will you will do something really stupid so that is why uh, you have to find out a proper way to break through and Lasker does it by playing on the uh, uh, you know on the you can say on the queen side and the king side uh, simultaneously it is uh, you know in some positions like this when when the opponent has one weakness it is important to create some another weakness as well in the on the other side of the board and now with two weaknesses uh, the opponent will not be able to defend that is the general idea in this kind of a static position so g4 is exactly that, uh, pro, provoking, uh, pro, provoking some sort of weakness on the king side. Uh, h6, you don't want to allow g5. So rook, uh, rook d3, uh, and now a5. Uh, h4, uh, sorry, a, rook d3, a5, and now h4, a takes b4. A takes before and now rook a e7 so it was you know some sort of it may be black was hoping on that some sign uh, some sort of counterplay on the a file but black just comes back to rook a rook to a7 and now king to f3 and you know probably white is just trying to get into king f4 and then play g5 uh, let me just show, show that to you and this would be you know create a terrible uh, counter uh, this would this would create uh, breakthrough for white here so i think that would be the plan for white king f3 and now rook g8 so as you can see here that black already sends the plan uh, that white wanted to play uh, king f4 king f4 and then g5 and black plays the rook back to g8 just on in order to you know defend something so king f4 comes and now g6 now rook g3 as you can see the position is now here uh, plus 1.5 uh, for black uh, so you can see you know with proper play white should be able to convert this but it's Capablanca who is playing with black pieces so rook g3 now g5 check and now king f3 now you may be wondering like what if oh no after you play king f3 you drop h4 right but what if you play if you take on h4 if you take on h4 then the plan is simple you just uh, go to rook s3 and then what is the way how could black defend this pawn and then this pawn you could play something like passive two passive like rook h8 and then but white will just double up the rooks on the h file and then just break through so it's better to not take here on h4 Instead, black uh, plays a very uh, you know bad blunder according to the engine, as you can see a double question mark knight to b6, and now uh, h takes g5, uh, h takes g5, and now rook h3. The breakthrough comes up. Um, rook, uh, rook d7, king g3. Just you know playing it a while. You know it is it is a slow move. It is definitely a slow move. But there is nothing that black could do in this position. Like look at this bishop here look at this knight here look at this look at this rook here defending this d6 weakness looking at this rook here look at this knight here so there is nothing that black could do and so i think king g3 is not a very good move but you no know, it's a slow move but it is okay it is not it is not a very harmful move for white so after king g3 king e8 and now rook dh1 just doubling up the um, h file bishop to b7 and now e5 now e5 now e5 just you know uh, the point of e5 is that you just want to come up with this knight to e4 
and once the knight comes to e4 you are threatening uh, you are attacking this d6 pawn you will be attacking this uh, f6 pawn you will be attacking this uh, g5 pawn so that is why uh, white played e5 and just letting this um, knight come to uh, e4 so e5 d takes e5 and now knight e4 as planned a knight to d5 because uh, White was threatening this nasty fort with uh, the king the, and the two rooks, so knight e5, knight d5, and now knight 6 to c5. That means uh, he finally brought this knight back to here on c5 to attack this uh, bishop, to attack this bishop and this uh, rook. He's giving a fork here. And so you would think that what if. So the normal move would be here to, you know, if you're playing a blitz, the normal move would be here to just defend this. Uh, bishop here with the rook or something like that but this just loses completely because this gives up the you know what do you say the protection of this d6 uh, square and now after knight to d6 check and anywhere you move uh, like you can just take it here you can take this knight for free so after Knight 6 to c5, he, um, you know, uh, Capablanca decided to play it down with the exchange and played bishop to c8. Now knight takes d7, bishop takes d7, and now rook to h7. So this is just, you know, complete domination of the 7th rank now. And now uh, white was, uh, you know, uh, white, white was threatening uh, some maneuvers like knight to, uh, knight to, uh, knight to d6. And knight to d6, and then eventually threatening this pawn, taking this pawn as well. So that's why uh, black overprotected this pawn with knight to uh, rook to uh, rook to f8, and now rook to a1. And this is very threatening, right? Like you are coming up with this uh, rook here, right? And and it, it will be soon game over. Uh, white's position is now plus 10. So after king to d8, rook a8 check, and then now bishop to c8, and now it's just collapsing with knight to c5. After knight to c5, you don't have any move because you are threatening uh, knight to e6 check, and then after the you know after the king moves to here, after the king moves to um, what to say e8, then rook takes c8 would be made. Right. So a very beautiful game by Lasker against Capablanca. Uh, even though you know this uh, properly, this game properly shows the technique, uh, uh, proper proper technique of breaking through. Of the patience that Lasker uh, Lasker showed in this game, uh, the main move of this game is b4, right? B4 uh, to explain the concept that we just showed here. Like b4 stops all counterplay. This is the most important and perhaps the best uh, best move in this game, which was a prophylactic move. So that is why b4 was a beautiful game. Uh, now let's get on to the next game. Uh, which shows us the concept of the uh, playing against the isolated pawn, right? So uh, let's get on to the next next game. Isolated pawn, uh, isolated pawn playing against isolated pawn. So this game will be a game with uh, Kochnoi and Karpov. Here, Victor Kochnoi is playing with the white pieces, and Karpov is playing with the black pieces. Victor Kochnoi is, uh, you know. He used to be a Russian grandmaster, and he was very controversial with the Russian uh, politics. Uh, Anatoly Karpov was a Russian uh, was a, a Russian player, and um, Korchnoi was strictly against the Russian communist uh, politics. Right, so there have been several instances of their controversy, which have been really famous. So here, let's begin with the game. So Korchnoi begins with c4, e6. Knight c3, d5, d4, bishop to e7, knight to f3, knight to f6, bishop g5. So this is the orthodox queen's gambit decline, QGD orthodox defense, uh, popularized by Emmanuel Lasko, second world champion. Bishop g5, h6. So here in this in this defense, the you know the the most important thing for the most important strategical plan for black is to uh, uh, exchange of some of the pieces, exchange of some of the minor pieces like this, uh, like this bishop, like this bishop, and then this knight. Uh, this, this, is, this is, uh, these are the some of the uh, strategical choices in this opening uh, for black. 
white on the other hand will try to attack attack on the queen side here the here the important thing is that because of the e6 pawn the blacks light squared bishop has is having a difficult game and so if he's if he's able to exchange this black, light squared bishop for this light squared bishop then it will be an excellent game for black that is how the normal uh, things are in this opening so h6 and bishop h4 and castles uh, rook to c1 d takes c4 so as you can already see here after d takes c4 uh, white is having an isolated pawn here at uh, on here e4 oh, sorry d4 d takes c4 and now e3 preparing to capture with bishop takes c4 uh, c5 bishop takes c4 c takes d4 and now e takes d4 you may think that why not knight takes d4 right knight takes d4 uh, not allowing uh, black to have an uh, black to play against the isolated d pawn so yeah knight takes d4 uh, it is possible but after something like you know if you just uh, think about this position objectively uh, white has black has excellent chances that uh, something like this right now white will be able to exchange of some of the major pieces of uh, of uh, of black black will be able to exchange of some of the major some of the minor pieces after bishop takes c7 and uh, not not queen takes c7 because if queen takes c7 then yeah uh, knight takes c3 would be possibly if uh, would be minutely possible so after knight takes e7 and then i think this this position is better for uh, not better but obviously i think black would have equalized even though these pieces are on still on the home home ground uh, it is easy to develop it is easy it is comparatively easy for uh, black to develop in this position because black can play uh, now black now has the possibility to play e5 right because black didn't take with the e pawn uh, if let's say after black castles after white castles black can play e5 uh, get this knight rid of the excellent uh, excellent square and then uh, white can um, white has to go to back to f3 and then after knight to c6 and then normal development like bishop g4 or bishop uh, even uh, bishop f5 i think it is possible that black would have equalized in this position the reason is that uh, black white does not have any more control of the e5 square of the crucial e5 square so that is why uh, in these variations normally white has to take with the e pawn and then control the e5 square even though white will have an isolated pawn right after knight takes c6 castle the knight to f5 bishop takes c7 bishop takes c7 and now bishop to b3 knight to f6 knight to e5 uh, jumping in with the knight, knight uh, bishop to d7 uh, white black is happy to you know exchange of these minor pieces and then uh, get the major major pieces such as the queen uh, such as the rook and uh, rooks and the queen against this uh, isolated d pawn so black uh, so black essentially does not want any of these minor pieces he is willing to exchange of all these uh, knights and bishops and then keep the pressure with the the major pieces the rook and the queens against this d pawn so that is black's strategical plan here so after queen to e2 uh, rook to c8 uh, knight to e4 knight takes c4 uh, queen takes c4 and now bishop t uh, bishop c6 knight takes c6 rook takes c6 and now rook to c3 the position is somewhat fa in favorable of the uh, black's position because of this obviously isolated d pawn uh, queen to d6 uh, g3 and now rook to d8 now if you see queen to d6 you can think that if you wanted to double up then you could have just played uh, queen to d7 but queen to d6 you know just gives gives more options to switch to the queen side if uh, black wants so that's why queen to d6 and then after g3 uh, blacks uh, black uh, increases the pressure with rook to d8 rook to d1 rook to b6 uh, rook to b6 is a very good move and uh, one of the annotators of this game showed that why rook to b6 is a good move because it keeps up the pressure with uh, it keeps the pressure on the 
on the black queen side uh, so not on the white queen side right like because if the white bishop for, uh, moves to anyone like if bishop wants to go here and threaten something like on the queen side uh, then bishop to c2 then this b pawn falls and the b pawn pawn b pawn falls right and in some variations if if the a pawn moves and then if this rook moves to somewhere to defend uh, then the the bishop falls so that is where rook to b6 is a very good move now after queen to e1, the black plays uh, queen to d7. Well, uh, the queen to d7, as we saw that uh, he was he initially played queen to d6. Right now he go, goes back to queen to d7, and now he wants to bring his rook back to here. So that is black's plan and increase the pressure on this uh, d pawn. So white having understood black's plan, uh, just plays you know passively trying to protect this d pawn. So rook c to d3 and now rook to d6 and you can see this alakine battery right uh, you know with full pressure on this uh, isolated d4 pawn so queen to e4 and now queen to c6 now you know if queen takes c6 then knight takes c6 and then uh, it will be very terrible for black it will be very terrible terrible for white because he will he won't be able to exchange uh, exchange this pawn just by playing here d5 because after knight to b4 then uh, this is game over for you can say the, uh, almost game over for uh, white because black can take this pawn uh, you know one two three and then four right white and black just has only four defenders and then soon his king king uh, king side majority of four to three will just win the game so black uh, so white didn't uh, exchange of the queens white has to have some counter chances by playing with the queens right like he can try to go something like rook to f3 and then trying to create some counter play against this pawn but karpov doesn't allow it so after knight to d5 uh, white king goes back to queen to d2 passively defending and now uh, queen to b6 again a very important move as you can see here that the engine is recommending a3 uh, a3 Korshna was actually worried about a3 because of this you know in some cases as we already discussed that if this rook wants to move somewhere and then uh, sorry if this rook wants to move somewhere and then create something uh, you know, something of this sort on this on this king side then this bishop will fall right if uh, if queen constant, consistently keeps pressure on this bishop on b3 so that is why Korshna did not play a3 but indeed a3 was the best move in the position here and as you can see it was uh, it was better to just play a3 and just uh, keep defending uh, but Kochma played here bishop takes d3 d5 bishop takes d5 is an inaccuracy as we already discussed bishop takes d5 rook takes d5 and now rook, b, rook to b3 trying to get some counter play but now queen to c6 and then queen to c3 now again <coughs> Uh, giving an offer to exchange of the queens right at this time if you exchange then it would be a very big blunder because uh, in this position that you know after a takes a b takes c3 then uh, you have you have freed up the uh, rook from the defense of this uh, d4 pawn uh, obviously this c3 pawn will, will still be a weakness and white can quickly uh, you know do something to uh, get uh, pr pr uh, increase the pressure on this c3 pawn but nevertheless why take the risk right so after uh, so after queen to c3 uh, black just played uh, qu uh, queen to d7 and now uh, f4 because obviously here the threat is of playing uh, e5 right that is the normal strategy in this games is to keep this uh, piece of pin now the now nobody is uh, protecting this rook right now nobody is protecting this rook on d1 and so if you play uh, if you play e5 then obviously you're going to win the pawn so that is why white played f4 trying stop playing uh, black from playing e e5 now b6 or rook to b4 defending d4 one more once more and now b5 you can see that um, he just played b6 and now b4, rook to b4 and now b5 
this is a truly a work of a master right because you would never expect something like this to uh, make sense why would you waste a tempo uh, to play b6 in the first move and then b5 in the second move rather why not just play b5 straight away these are some of the questions that even i don't know like it is truly a, ma a work of the master and so some cases have to you know um, may not lie lie in the scope of this video so i'm going to skip behind this i don't know really don't know why he played why carpo played b6 and then played b5 i really don't know the answer to this question a4 nevertheless by koshnoi and now after b takes a4 now queen to a3 now a5 uh, now after a5 uh, this is uh, again once more an inaccuracy uh, you know uh, as we already saw that uh, this was you know uh, after queen to uh, queen to a3 is not a very good move because it allows a5 and even uh, rook to uh, rook to, and the next move that will follow that is the rook takes a4 that is also not a very good move uh, because it just allows black to dissolve this queen side because this the queen side is the only thing that is uh, keeping white from having you know not uh, not getting completely lost because the queen side is the only thing which is uh, giving some kind of a counterplay uh, after a4 then there is no counterplay like because after a4 uh, you are just dissolving your queen side and then there is no more counterplay for you to play against this uh, isolated weakness right so to have chances of counterplay white should have some uh, kept some pressure of the come uh, should have kept some pressure by playing something like queen to b3 or you know tried something because if you play queen to b3 now mm, then white has to you know sort of i don't uh, not definitely black does not have to defend because the black is already defending this uh, b4 b5 pawn with the queen and the rook so black does not have to defend but still keep some pressure right do not dissolve off the queen side just like that after b5 and a4 uh, white black uh, white has completely lost chances of counterplay after b takes a4 and then queen a3 uh, a5 rook takes a4 and now queen to b5 a lot of pressure in the game like uh, and also the white's king he is here here you can see is very much exposed right we will see later in the game how this uh, turns out to be a very good uh, you know very good uh, very good tactical motive for even black so after rook to rook to d2 over protecting this b2 pawn e5 now this e5 pawn is very great because it you know, it shows really that even though you played f4 carpo just doesn't care because he will play e5 no matter what um, th this is the breakthrough move uh, that uh, gives black everything right like and this is actually a positional sacrifice if you if you see here right now then black has uh, five pawns one on the queen side and four on the king side um, white has uh, uh, five, white has also two pawns one outside uh, uh, queen side pawn and then five pawns uh, in the on the king side right four, uh, two pawns in the queen side and then three pawns in the king side so e5 just you know it just uh, sorry e5 is a positional sacrifice as you will see so after e e5 f takes e5 obviously you cannot take uh, e takes f5 because that will just you know uh, rook takes d2 and the knight so after uh, e uh, f takes e5 and now rook takes e5 again if you take then i take and then this position is going to be really bad right like because black has already inflated uh, uh, sorry invaded invaded the uh, seventh rank the seventh heaven for that is the fourth black that is so that is the second rank actually and then there are some nasty things like queen to d uh, queen to d5 and then this threatening mate on g2 so this will be very bad for uh, white so after rook takes c5 uh, black just plays queen a1 and this is very passive and then uh, this allows a very good you know uh, tactic uh, not a tactical uh, tactical thing but no something which is very strong for uh, black that is the silent uh, queen e8 move now threatening uh, now threatening rook to e1 and then winning the queen and then for the winning the rook as well because it will come with check and then uh, white will pick up uh, black will pick up this rook on d2 as well so now black white has nothing to do but just give up the uh, you know seventh rank that is the second rank so now 
d takes e5 and then rook takes d2. Now, as you can see here, that um, black has one pawn on the queen side and then three pawns on the king side. Now, black, white has also uh, one pawn on the uh, queen side and then three pawns on the king side. So that was a temporary kind of a positional sacrifice. No, sorry. Uh, this is uh, so now rook takes a5. You know nothing better to do. So just grab a pawn and now kind of a sacrifice. It, it will again become a sacrifice. It became a sacrifice again now. So now again. Obviously, threatening mate in one, so queen to g2 will be made. And now rook to uh, a8 check, king h7, now queen to b1 check, g6, and now queen to f2. Uh, threatening queen takes f7 check, which will be made. Okay, queen takes f7 will be checkmate. If you play this, then obviously queen takes f7 will be made. So queen takes f7, uh, queen f1, and now queen c5 check. And now king h1, and now queen to d5 check. Uh, this is you know like a staircase kind of a thing he just got here and gave check and now king h1 and now queen to d5 check and once you now black moves to and here actually white resigned Kochner resigned and once white moves to g1 not take the rook here on uh, uh, a8 but because if rook takes a8 if rook takes a8 then this will be a perpetual uh, queen takes f7 check and then king king g king h8 and then queen f6 check so it will become a perpetual so after king uh, king h1 and then king g2 then uh, rook to d1 and then ultimately you have to sacrifice this uh, queen for the rook so very clear game you know very uh, instructive game uh, the positional things you know uh, especially the b e5 break in this position e5 is uh, e5 breakthrough was very important to find because uh, until and unless because as you can see here you, you can see that this uh, the position has no no the pieces are disconnected this rook is on a4 the queen is on a3 the rook is on d2 without any protection the d4 weakness is still hanging and the position does not have any harmony for white uh, black pieces are coordinated and well you know are ready to give an attack both on the queen side and the king side but uh, white pieces are not at all well coordinated so this e5 breakthrough was very important to find and then another key moment you could say that uh, uh, that again that was very bad for black was uh, a4 move a4 move because it just dissolves uh, you know for engines this might be uh, this might be you know not not much of this for engines this not not not, not make much of a difference but for humans to play against this this is very hard to find uh, especially so as you can see here then uh, uh, then let's get on to the next game then right and then let's really let's get on to the next game uh, which explains the significance of uh, the influence of holes, right? Influence of holes. So this is a game between Jose Raul Capablanca, the third world chess champion, and Eugene uh, Zanosko Borowski. Capablanca is white and uh, Borowski is uh, black. Here we will understand the importance and the significance of holes, right? Influence of holes in in a game. So d4, d5, knight to f3, knight to f6, c4, e6. Bishop to g5, bishop to e7, e3, knight to bd7. And again, this is the uh, QGD orthodox defense, right? QGD orthodox defense is on the board. Knight to c3, castles, rook to c1, uh, e c6, queen to c2, b6. So with uh, b6, black is trying to play bishop to b7 and uh, fian uh, c takes d5, c takes d e takes d5. Bishop to d3, uh, Bishop to b7, and now castles, h6, h4, no, Bishop h4, Knight to h5, Bishop takes e7, Bishop, Queen takes e7, Rook f2, e1, and now uh, Queen to d8. Queen to d8, I don't know what he got scared of, like Borowski, did he get scared of, uh, you know, some this Rook is x-raying this uh, Queen. The annotator says that this is a, not a very good move. Like queen to d8 does not, nothing for the queen. Does nothing for the black. 
twin to a4 so if you if you just take a look at this position since the opening stage has been completed uh, if you try to find out the weaknesses in uh, black's position it is that when when somebody plays b6 or g6 then he makes this a6 uh, a6 c6 squares very weak right so this a6 and c6 squares are weak and so if black, white is able to exchange of this uh, light squared bishop for this bishop then this a6 and c6 will be very weak and then uh, you know in some cases if the knight moves somewhere then uh, knight can come to e5 and then threaten this uh, c6 pawn right so this is the general plan for uh, white white here just to exchange of the light squared bishops and then uh, play on the holes right and black ultimately goes for that and that only so queen to a4 trying to play bishop to a6 so black just played a6 which again if you see here a6 was not a good move because once you played a6 you can see here that this a7 pawn was defending this b6 pawn right so after playing a, a, a6 this b6 pawn becomes very weak so now what will you do with this b6 pawn because you can uh, atta attack this b6 pawn by playing queen to b3 and then going knight to a4 and then you know uh, this b6 pawn will become very weak so a7 also was also a very weak move in my opinion um, so if you can see here yeah the only thing that is defending this uh, b6 pawn is this knight right so capablanca immediately goes off to bishop to f5 trying to trade off this uh, knight which will which is guarding this uh, pawn and black plays g6 again black here is playing very bad in terms of position in terms of the pawn structure right like those he, he he obviously does not understand the significance of holes uh, black is pushing any pawn like anything he just pushed a6 b6 uh, on the queen side and now he's pushing g6 also uh, making the king side weak so obviously he doesn't understand the significance of holes so bishop takes uh, d7 queen takes d7 and now queen to b3 as we already said that um, white attack white wants to attack this uh, b6 pawn and now white just pushes b5 like as if he doesn't care about anything no he doesn't care really about anything right? like because if you see now uh, now after playing b5 you can see uh, all the white squares are very you know very uh, very much uh, strong but the a5 square b6 square and the c5 square these are all holes in white's position and these are excellent outposts for the knight like knight can go from here a4 to c uh, a4 and then to c5 right like this could be uh, this could be an excellent motive for white's uh, white's knight so obviously white want to do that and the first move in this com in this very big combination i would say is knight to e uh, knight to e5 bringing back this you know uh, not not allowing uh, uh, not allowing black to any more uh, defend this bishop here so that now white can play knight to a4 which is his motive knight to a4 and now if uh, b takes a4 then obviously black has done an excellent job because after queen takes b7 black's position is really bad because the, because of the c6 uh, now c6 will fall and immediately after that uh, a4 will also fall so obviously this is not a good position for black so after knight to a4 he just plays rook a to e8 and now knight to c5 uh, bishop to c8 and now knight to knight c to d3 and now knight bishop to b7 and now knight to c5 so actually uh, the annotator said that white uh, the capablanca was just trying to gain time in this position and that's why he just repeated the moves for open set so after knight to c5 and now bishop to c8 again knight takes a6 and now obviously if uh, this is a small tactic like if bishop takes a6 then obviously uh, rook takes c6 and wherever this queen moves uh, it, it is going to be a very hard position for uh, uh, for a white black to defend line like, because look at this knight here trapped on h5 and just not trapped but you know, very poor piece on h5 and then the queen and the rooks are all lying against the king whereas white has an excellent position with the queen attacking this pawn this pawn so many targets for white's camp but none for black right so after 
knight takes uh, a6 bishop just bishop to b7 and now knight to c5 and now bishop to c8 so black has nothing much to do he's just um, uh, you know playing the pieces uh, you know just uh, back and forth now back to c uh, knight c from c to d3 and now bishop to b7 rook c2 uh, rook to c2 now trying to double up on this c file and then uh, increase the pressure on the c6 pawn the most straightforward manner right like this is the most simplest style capablanca is always known for a simpler style right like so rook to c2 and now rook to c8 and now rook e to c1 just increasing this pressure on this c6 pawn just very beautiful right and now rook f to e8 and now a4 a4 like if you can see here in this position uh, black already has a weakness right like that is the c6 pawn that is the c6 pawn we are we are all aware of that that the c6 pawn is a backward pawn and black has already intensified his pressure on this c6 pawn now as we said uh, before as well the most important thing of positional play is that whenever your opponent has a weakness you have to try to create another weakness as well in black in the opponent's position right and now this a4 move does exactly that this a4 move is uh, is job is that that once you try to trade off on this b5 square a takes b5 a takes uh, um, c takes b5 queen takes b5 if black makes it possible then yes you will be again up a pawn but even if uh, black doesn't allow it uh, this a4 tries to promote uh, create a weakness on the queen side that is the sole you know sole motive of playing a4 just trying to create another weakness on the queen side and now this c6 pawn is a weakness now again there will be a weakness on the b uh, b5 square or something like that right? like even if it takes then some some kind of weakness will occur and now with two weaknesses in black's camp uh, black will not be able to defend both of these weaknesses simultaneously and this is capablanca's plan so f6 finally f6 uh, which which you may seem that uh, f6 drops uh, g6 right like f6 drops g6 but uh, black has nothing better to do this knight here sitting on e5 is a very important piece strategically because of such a great outpost so if, with f6 i would say that it is it is black's best chance to just give up this g6 pawn and uh, so yeah black just gave g6 pawn and after king to f7 and knight g to f4 uh, white is up two pawns, right? Like white is up two pawns and is having a winning position. But I think f6 was a correct move because it is the only way that uh, you know black can try to create some kind of a counterplay. So knight g to f4, and now knight takes f4, knight takes f4, bishop to a6, uh, defending this uh, b5 pawn as we discussed. So a takes b5, bishop takes b5. Now this even this bishop ta uh, bishop takes b5 is ultimately to uh, to defend this uh, c6 weakness right so now uh, knight takes d5 uh, knight takes d5 again uh, ultimately what do you say uh, uh, this is an important tactical tactic right like knight takes d5 if c takes d5 then obviously queen takes uh, c takes d5 and queen takes b5 is coming and then uh, black's position is gone like gone very horribly wrong So after uh, so knight x after knight x d5 black just pins the knight queen to a6 uh, you know now you cannot move this knight but this is just a temporary threat um, white immediately plays rook to c3 so as to again start moving this knight because now if black takes then uh, white can to, uh, take back with the rook so after c takes d5 queen takes b5 and now rook to b8 and uh, now rook to c7 check and now king to g8 and now rerouting rerouting this queen whole way to the queen side remember this g6 weakness as we told right like taking this g6 pawn and now white plays queen to d3 and it is game over for black right like there is absolutely nothing that i think uh, black can do other than to exchange of the queen i think this would be the best move for black i think in this position because sooner or later my queen is gonna come here and give you checkmate on g8 uh, g8 or h7 so I think the best move in this position would be here to just to play f7 and h7. A very clear game as we said again as uh, before as well. Um, one of the most pivotal moments in this position was uh, where did if you really want to ask where did black go wrong? 
then I can tell you that Black went wrong horribly uh, on this when he was playing uh, a6 and b6 like anything right like, uh, yeah trying to create some weakness in black's position this was white's idea right like uh, trying to create some kind of a hole or some kind of weakness and queen to a4 it's just a threat it's just a threat of uh, bishop to a6 but immediately uh, you know, white is able to take advantage of it uh, by you know provoking this weakness provoking a6 and now after bishop f5 uh, g6 and g6 again is a very bad move i think uh, bishop takes, uh, b7, queen takes b7, and then queen to b, uh, b3 attacking this pawn now and then after b5 and now uh, knight to uh, knight to e5 queen to b6 and then knight to a4 uh, knight yeah just look at these beautiful knights Look at this beautiful knights posted here on c5 and uh, e5. Whereas look at this knight here posted on h5. Uh, you know, just this just you know the positional supremacy that um, black white is having in this position. So always have your pawn moves properly. Uh, that ends our third concept. That is the influence of holds. So let's get on to our uh, fourth positional concept. That is the uh, pawn structures, right? Pawn structures, the importance of pawn structures. So here we are going to discuss a very important pawn structure, which is the um, what do you say? Uh, the Karlsbad Karlsbad structure, right? The Karlsbad structure is a very nice structure. Uh, the Karlsbad structure, uh, you can see. I will I will show you here what does Karlsbad structure mean. But Karlsbad structure is a pawn structure which uh, occurs frequently in. In games with the Karo Khan, uh, Queen's Gambit declined, Scandinavian defense, and many other uh, many other openings. Right. So with White we have Jose Raul Capulanca, and Black we have Harry Golombek. I'm just going to rush through the opening moves. <clears throat> so this is the Karlsbad structure. If you see here, white has got a a2, b2 pawn, and then d4, a d4, uh, e3, and then f2, g2, and h2. Whereas uh, black has a queen side majority with um, a7, b7, uh, c6, d5, and then f7, g7, and h7. So this kind of a pawn structure is called the Karlsbad structure. And one of the most important plans for uh, the Karlsbad structure is to look for the uh, the side which has a minority with the minority with the pawns, right? Like he, here on the queen side, uh, white has the minority. This a2 b2 pawn against this uh, a7 b7 and c6 pawn. So white's main motive is to here to play uh, b4 and then a4 uh, a4 a4 b4 and then just go to f uh, b5 if if black allows that. This is called a minority attack. This is one of the most important uh, plans for the position having a minority in a Karlsbad structure. So let's see how uh, uh, Capablanca uses this minority attack in this uh, game. Knight b2 d7, bishop to d3, h6, bishop to h4, castles, knight to f3, rook to e8, castles, bishop to e7, bishop to g3. No, no more use of pinning this knight on f6, right? So bishop to g3, knight to f8, h3, uh, knight, bishop to e6, rook to a, b1. So the important concept of uh, rook a to b1 is that he, uh, as we said here, that he wants to go to b1 and then start pushing with b4, a4, and then ultimately create some weakness with the b5 move. This is the minority attack. Knight to h5, bishop to h2, g6, knight to e5, and now knight to g7, and b4, finally. Here we have the start of the minority attack by white. Bishop to f5, knight to a4, bishop takes d3, queen to g3, knight, knight to d7, rook to f to c1, uh, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and now bishop to d6. Here, black is exchanging of the pieces in you know some sort of 
uh, which is regularly the plan for white, uh, regularly the plan for black here. Right? Like in the Queen's Gambit declined, or you know some sort of uh, these openings. The white's main motive is to exchange off these minor pieces and then uh, squeeze into an equalish end game where both have equal chances. So bishop to d6 and now uh, queen takes d6 and b5. So now uh, you know trying to create some weakness on the queen side uh, is uh, white's plan in this position. b5 and now c takes b5. <laughs> now queen takes b5. As you can see here, uh, so obviously uh, uh, white is threatening taking this b7 pawn. C c5 is a, an excellent square for the white knight. So what can black do here? Black just you no know, uh, black doesn't take this pawn here uh, here immediately because if now white plays uh, black plays a trap actually here. Uh, black plays knight to b6 and if uh, black becomes, you know, uh, sorry, white becomes greedy, uh, then uh, white, uh, black has this option of going rook e to b8. And now the queen is trapped. Now the white queen is trapped, no matter where it goes. Like, uh, it can go here. But, uh, obviously, this file is already covered by the rook. And all these squares are covered by the uh, white queen. He cannot go here because this is covered by queen, this is covered by queen. Uh, so everything is covered by the queen. Right, so the queen will become trapped. So this is a sort of a trap uh, by playing knight to e6. So first knight to c3. So now if, now white is threatening to play uh, queen takes uh, b7, you know, queen takes b7. Because if let's say he plays h5, which is a stupid move, then if rook to e to b8, then white can play queen takes uh, d5. Because now the knight supports the uh, e5 square, d5 square as well. Right. So he does not allow. Uh, so he plays rook e to d8 because he knows that this b7 pawn is not going to very is not going to help him much, right? So obviously white takes the pawn. Blanca is a pawn eater, so he plays queen takes b7 and now queen to a3, looking for some counterplay. And now knight takes d5. You know, taking another pawn. Uh, Capulanga calculates very good, so you know, does not have any uh, fear in taking these pawns. Queen takes a2, knight to b4, and now queen to a4, and now knight to c6. In this position at move number 29, uh, black has already resigned. Actually, white has won the game, Jose Raul Capulanga won the game. Because if you see here in this position, then hmm, white has infiltrated black's position. Look at these rooks, b rook and c rook, ready to infiltrate in, onto the 7th rank. Now black has already, you know, sorry, white has already came up into the 7th rank with the queen. Black is already threatening some kind of, you know, uh, already good outpost for the uh, knight. And this is soon a game over. Uh, if you see the computer evaluation, then it would say around like a plus 7.7, .7, right? So, if you really want to understand, like, where did um, black go wrong? Uh, where did horribly black go wrong? Then I can say the right at the moment where he allowed, I think, b4. Uh, sorry, b5. I'm just taking it. Uh, so, here already the position is plus 1.5 in favor of white. Mm, but still, to make it decisive, like, with the b4, it is plus 0 0.8. So, equalish kind of a position. But advantages, obviously, to white. No, bishop to d, bishop to f5, yeah. Because it just, you know, black is not, black was not careful about this threat uh, of this minority attack that white could build up. He just didn't know about it, I think. Harry Columbus did not know much about it, the minority attack. And so he just went on playing, uh, exchanging of the pieces. But he just really didn't understand about the b4 and then b5. So bishop to f5 and then knight to f5. Bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, now knight to d7, rook f to c1, bishop take, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop takes d6, bishop queen takes d6, and now b5. So here the position is plus 1.4, <coughs> excuse me, um, and immediately when c takes b5, 
CTX D5 it just you know from uh, and gives too many targets for white. A7, oh, sorry B7, A7, and then this uh, D5 weakness as well. Now we here we have an isolated node. Right? Like after Queen takes B5, um, D5 is hanging, uh, B7 is hanging. A lot of stuff is just hanging. You know, these are like hanging fruits. Right? Like a lot of stuff is hanging and uh, too many weaknesses in black scam. So the minority attack uh, that uh, you know white just played here at uh, group A to B1, and then after some time B4, and then after exchanging a lot of pieces B5. This was the minority attack by white, and uh, white was successful in converting this. So that was our fourth concept that is the minority attack. Uh, so let's get into our fifth concept and the final. Uh, sorry, not the fourth concept was the uh, pawn structures and then Karlsbad structure in which we discovered out the minority attack. So let's get on to the fifth concept that is the art of defense. So this is a game between Yan Timan uh, and Svetozar Glitorich. So Hyantiman is a very attacking player as we know that he has played a lot of games in which you know has brought surprising results. He has um, beaten uh, I think the uh, Karpa right here. Hyantiman has beaten Anatoly Karpa with bird opening I think. No, not bird opening but I think G6 or B6 uh, some weird kind of a move against the Karpa. So obviously he is a strong player um, but here and he al also tries to attack and uh, but here in this game, Glicorich really shows how to defend the attack, right? So let's begin the game. E4 with by Yantiman. E5, E3, E6. So the standard rule of pace. <coughs> Exchange variation. Yantiman. F6. D4, E6, D4, D4. Queen to h5 check. Queen to h5 check is okay. Not a very bad move, I would say, but um, sort of a premature attack. I would not say it is a premature attack completely because the position is still uh, better for better for white here. The position is still plus 0.7, as you would see in the meter. But if you want, if you would tell me that. Would you really want to go your go with your uh, queen here? Because immediately after queen to h5 check, then comes g6, and then you have to again move the queen. Right? Like this is some sort of an angry theme or you know, uh, hyper aggressive comment. So queen to h4, now h5, and now e5. Uh, so again, pawn sacrifice when uh, you should not definitely not play an attack for an attack uh, with the Knight and bishop here on the first rank, right? Like, first you should get your pieces out, uh, get your pieces out to the third, at least the third third rank, and then probably go for a pawn sacrifice and try to get an attack. So, e5 and f takes e5. Uh, obviously, if uh, e5 and bishop takes e5, then comes rook f to e1, and then f4 will be devastating for black. So, after f takes e5, then bishop b bishop g5 attacking the queen. Uh, but bishop just drops back to e7 and now knight back to f3 bishop takes g5 so exchanging of the pieces that is what black is doing here black is playing simple chess black is playing simple chess you know not trying to complicate much about it but uh, white is trying to you know create some sort of a premature attack knight to f3 bishop takes g5 knight takes g5 Obviously, if you take with the queen, queen takes g5, then queen takes g5, knight takes g5, you have already dissolved the attack for nothing. <coughs> so, bishop to f5. Really good move. Bishop to f5 is a really good move because it just protects g6. And you will see here later in the game that this g6 pawn will come under attack, but this bishop on f5 and this g6, these will be, you know, the best friends forever. So, very good uh, defending move, defending move. Bishop to f5, knight to c3, knight to h6, queen to g5, knight to f5, knight c to e4, 
So now white has definitely all the pieces out of the first rank and now black is a pawn up and now we have to see how white is able to attack and how black will defend that attack. Knight takes g5 again exchanging pieces. Knight takes g5. Queen to f6. F4. Defending this you know uh, trying to open up lines right like trying to open up lines that is what what uh, what to do so hyanthima is also uh, you know playing good chess like you know, obviously you don't want to take here because uh, rook to rook a one check and then it will be soon be dropping right? like uh, after king move somewhere like obviously you cannot defend uh, so and then, and then. this will be definitely be very bad for black it will be plus 1.5 right right so so not a good position for black in this case so and that is why he played f4 which makes sense a lot of sense to me if you ask about the position then the position one here tier uh, it shows that uh, black is better obviously yes angle coach defends this position so now e4 e4 is good because uh, Sorry, I think I am having some sort of a trouble on the network. Let me just switch back to okay, yeah. So e4, not opening any lines in front of the king until the king is safe and castled, or in you know case in some some manner. It's not at all opening the line. He just plays f4 and then e4. I don't care. So rook a d1, queen takes b2, grabbing another pawn. So. Uh, I would not be very comfortable grabbing a pawn while keeping the black king in the center but if you know then you know like it's if you can or if you are able to calculate like a computer and then give the best moves in the position then obviously you can take a pawn but uh, for me personally I would not be very comfortable taking a pawn when your black king is in the center with an open d file and some sort of an attack right I would not be very comfortable so c3 this just you know uh, versus the black's position versus white's position queen takes a2 another pawn queen to e3 trying to create something you no know, after knight takes e4 bishop takes e4 queen takes e4 check something like that but black just castles at this point black just cancels you know at just the nick of the time and now um, black is not very much catchy about this pawn so he is happy to give this pawns Queen to e6. So obviously, uh, no. If knight takes e4, sorry. If uh, if here in this case, after castles, if knight takes e4, then that is bad because uh, then black can go to oh, sorry. Uh, then black can go to e6 and then pin this knight to the queen and then win the knight. So knight takes this would wouldn't be very good for white. So after castles, uh, white just plays h3, trying to go uh, h3 and then trying to go g4 and then after h takes g4 h takes g4, uh, you know, trying to create something out of the position, you know, because this as this, as we said this bishop is a very strong defending piece. Whenever you see something like this, uh, pawn on g6 pawn on uh, bishop on uh, f5 and then this pawn here on uh, on this e4 and this pawn here on h5 it is a very solid structure like you cannot uh, there is very less you can do to you know try to create some sort of weaknesses because it is a bishop and not a regular pawn so after h3 white definitely wants to go g4 so queen to a3 and now g4 comes h takes g4 h takes g4 and now bishop takes g4 and obviously queen takes c4 and not allowing because obviously if you take here then this will be mate <coughs> king and check and then queen is uh, mate so obviously queen takes e 4 is the best move and now after bishop to c5 check white is the one whose king is under attack so rook to f2 but now rook to f6 just defending right just defending this position just defending this position uh, just defending g6 not allowing queen takes g6 so 
after rook to d4, rook a to f8, uh, rook to g2. Now bishop drops back to c8, and now rook to h2, queen takes c3, uh, rook to d3, and now yeah, rook to, after rook to, rook to d3 was a blunder because after queen to c1 jack, uh, there is very little hope for you know uh, white because uh, you are facing this threat now. So you uh, sorry. After after queen takes f4, then you are facing this threat, queen to f2 check, and then it will be a mate in no, no, nothing less than 10, 10 or 20 moves, 10 or 15 moves. So you have to take you have to take this queen and then dissolve off this attack while uh, black will be up five pawns, right? Like this <laughs> interesting. This is a very interesting position for white because white has no pawn left in his position, whereas uh, black has uh, five pawns, right? So. <laughs> this is a very interesting position for black. A very failed attack, you can say. Very failed attack for black. Uh, so yeah, uh, after this move, queen takes f4. Yantiman resigns and black wins the game. Blakoric wins this game by defending this position. If you want some takeaways, then I could say that uh, bishop g5. Yeah, uh, bishop f5. This was a move which was really good, I think. Uh, a very very good defending move, bishop f5. This is you know holds the position together. Bishop f5 defending this pawn and then defend this pawn g6 g6 pawn defending h5 uh, g6 pawn defending uh, f5 and then after he even even if he plays e4 f4 and then uh, black can play e4. So you know a lot of. Uh, obviously, in this position, black can go to d4 and then uh, create some counterplay. But after uh, some sort of development, even, even when um, black went to play f4 after uh, like three or four moves, black just come replied with e4 and holds the position again together. So these were the two main take key takeaways uh, from this game, and uh, I hope you will enjoyed this uh, live lecture. Uh, so thank you all for watching this uh, watching this video i hope to see you again soon okay guys bye